rich friends, people who make between fifty and hundred thousand dollars a year are too rich for him. I guess he wants to make them poor. He's succeeding at that. Yep. One in four, sorry, one in five Canadians uh, told Angus Reid that they will be affected, including one in five of people making between fifty and hundred thousand dollars a year, Mr. Speaker. Another tax targeting the middle class by this promise-breaking Prime Minister. If those Canadians are wrong and they won't be affected, will the Prime Minister announce that he will amend his tax increase law to exclude anybody making less than hundred thousand dollars a year? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, our increase of the capital gains inclusion rate will affect people who make more than $250,000 in profits when they sell successful investments within a given year. We feel that those people can make a slight less amount of profits so that we can make sure we're investing in young people who can afford housing, so that we help seniors with the cost of dental care, so we deliver free insulin and free uh, prescription contraceptives across this country. We're asking the wealthiest and the most successful to pay a little bit more so we can help those who need it, and the Conservatives are choosing to stand with the wealthiest. You are the wealthiest. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Socialist baffle gab. Not my words. Those are the words of Scott Bryson. The former Liberal President of the Treasury Board, the very person to whom the Prime Minister trusted all of his spending. Add to that Bill Morneau and John Manley, two former finance ministers who have now said they are against this tax increase, and David Dodge, a Liberal former Governor of the Bank of Canada. Now that all these Liberals say that the Prime Minister is up to social, uh, socialist baffle gab. Will he reverse this job-killing tax on Canadians? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, it should actually be no surprise to Canadians to see the Conservatives, after pretending to care about workers, after pretending to care about vulnerable people, revert to type and stand against and ask for the wealthiest to pay a little bit more in taxes so we can invest even more uh, in Canadians who need it, whether it's through a uh, national school food program, whether it's expanding places in child care, uh, whether it's uh, delivering dental care for seniors and Canadians with disabilities. These are all things the Conservatives stand against, just like they stand against asking the wealthiest to pay their fair share. That's a shame. He said the same thing like eight times already. The Honourable Member from Port Moody, Coquitlam. Mr. Speaker, the housing crisis is hurting seniors in Port Moody. The Liberals have promised to build more affordable housing, but yet they continue to sit on their hands and drag their feet. The closed Canada Post Office at 45 Mary Street is a good location for quality affordable homes for seniors. New affordable homes at this location has the support of the city and the community, but the Liberals have yet to put a shovel in the ground. Why won't the Prime Minister step up and build the affordable home seniors need in Port Moody? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we are uh, pleased that we've been able to contribute to a massive number of seniors' homes across the country over the past years, but we also know we get to do even more with the most ambitious plan on housing this country has ever seen, from increased density uh, to more affordable homes to using public lands uh, and federally held lands like post office buildings and uh, Department of National Defence properties to build more homes that are affordable for Canadians. This is our plan to ensure that we are delivering for seniors and for future generations. Uh, while the concern plans off to the highest bidders, we're going to make sure long-term leases give affordable homes for seniors and all Canadians. 